In this video, I'm going to be using the ICA training system. This is a great system for quickly setting up drills. It's also great for learning about the tangent line. You simply draw a line from the cue ball to the object ball, and you will immediately see the tangent line. It also tells you the exact angle the cue ball is to the object ball. And as you move the object ball around, the tangent line and angle update in real time. The next YouTube video will have ball pocketing drills using this system, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And all the drills I use in this banking video can be downloaded for free if you have the ICA training system. In this first part, we're going to quickly go over how all the diamonds connect with each other. When using this system, whatever pocket you're banking toward will become zero. And the diamond next to this pocket will be 10, the next diamond is 20, then 30, 40, and on to 80. The diamonds on the opposite rail will be numbered exactly the same. And that's all you need to remember. Let's say the cue ball is here by this diamond, which we know is 20. So how do we shoot at the opposite rail to send the cue ball to zero? If we draw a line from 20 to 10, we can see that the cue ball is directly on this line. Which means all we have to do is shoot toward 10 and the cue ball will head to the corner pocket. So now if we place a cue ball on this path, we can shoot toward 10 over and over again with the same result. Now if we have two balls on this path, we can shoot the object ball toward 10 and send it to the corner pocket. Now the cue ball is on the 40-20 path, which means if we shoot toward 20, the cue ball should head toward the corner pocket. And when you try this shot, on some tables the bank may come up short using just center high. For instance, on this diamond table, the bank comes up short of the corner pocket when I'm shooting with just center high. So when this happens, you have two good options. The first option is to aim to the left of your target, and this tends to work extremely well. Now when I bank a ball, I can aim the object ball just to the left of the target. Or you can use a little left spin to send the cue ball toward the corner pocket. Even if your table is playing short, you can still use targets along the side rail as a reference point. Then make slight adjustments depending on your table. So when I bank a ball on this path, I'll use low right on the cue ball, which will transfer left spin to the object ball, sending it toward the corner pocket. Once you get familiar with these paths, it will also help your kick shots as well as your banks. Now it looks like the ball is on the 60-30 path. And when we talk about the ball being on a path, the path is created from diamond to diamond, not the cushions in front of the diamond. So no matter where the ball is on the path, you can still use your target as a reference point. Now the cue ball is on the 80-40 path, so we're going to shoot toward 40 to send the cue ball to zero. And when shooting the ball toward 40, we're going to aim toward the back of the side pocket. So the cue ball will strike the cushion right next to the pocket. Once again, once you become familiar with these paths, your kick shots will become much more accurate. Now the cue ball is on the 30-15 path. So if we aim toward 15, the cue ball should head toward the corner pocket. And when you try this shot, it may help in the beginning to place a piece of chalk between the first and second diamond to represent 15. And remember to make any necessary adjustments when practicing these drills if your table plays short. Now the cue ball is on the 50-25 path. So we're going to aim the cue ball between the second and third diamond on the opposite side rail. 
Once again, you may want to place a piece of chalk on the rail to represent 25. This time the cue ball is on the 70-35 path. We'll place a piece of chalk halfway between 30 and 40. Since we're on the 70-35 path, the angle is starting to widen, so you may not need as much English on the cue ball. On this table, I can shoot this shot with just center high. Now the ball is between diamonds, and when this happens, I'll show you how to find what path the ball is on. Since the first diamond is 10 and the second diamond is 20, then 15 will be between both diamonds. And here is how the numbers break down between the diamonds. So now if we look at the cue ball position, it looks like it's on the 18-9 path. So if we aim the ball toward 9, it should head toward the corner pocket. In this example, the cue ball is between the 5th and 6th diamond, and an easy way to find the path the cue ball is on is to place your pull cue on a nearby path that you know goes to 0. In this case, we're going to place a pull cue on the 50-25 path. The cue ball isn't on this path, so we're going to slide the cue over to another path that goes to 0, the 54-27 path. And now we can see that the ball is directly under the pull cue, so this is the correct path. Shooting toward 27 will send the ball toward the corner pocket. When both the cue ball and object ball are on the same path, it's called a natural bank. Later in part 2, I'm going to show you what to do when the cue ball isn't on the same path as the object ball. This trick of using your pull cue to find the correct path for the object ball will work no matter where the ball is on the table. In this example, the ball is in the middle of the table. So the first thing we're going to do is place a pull cue on a nearby path that we know goes to 0, 70, 35. And now we can see that the ball is close to being on this path. So we're going to slide the cue stick over just a bit to 68, 34. And now we can see that this will work for sending the ball to 0. In this drill, we're going to place four balls on the table, and the goal is to find the path each ball is on. Once we find the path, we're going to go ahead and bank it into the corner pocket. So I'll use my pull cue to find the path the first ball is on. It's not on the 2010 path, so I'll move the cue stick over to another path I know goes to zero, which in this case is 16-8. And the one ball is directly on this path. The two ball isn't on the 3015 path or the 2010 path, so it's somewhere in between. And now it looks like it's on the 2613 path. The next ball is between the 4020 path and the 3015 path. So I'll move the cue stick around until I find a path that it's on, and it looks like it's on the 3417 path. The last ball is just outside the 4020 path. So I'll keep moving my cue stick over different paths until I find the right one. And it looks like the ball is on the 4422 path. As we mentioned earlier, whatever pocket we're banking the ball toward becomes zero. So in this example, we're going to bank the cue ball toward the side pocket, so it now becomes zero. And the diamonds increase by 10 from there. So knowing this, we can now see that the cue ball is on the 2010 path. Aiming toward 10 will send the cue ball toward the side pocket. Remember, if your table play is short, you either need to aim to the right of the diamond or you can use a touch of right spin. For these shots, I'm using just a small amount of right spin. So when I shoot this combination, I'll be using left spin on the two ball, which will transfer a little right spin to the object ball. Now we're on the 30-15 path. Once you can start to visualize these paths, your kicking and banking should improve dramatically. Once again, when I bank this ball, I'm going to be using a little left spin on the two ball to transfer a right spin to the object ball. 
This system also works for banking balls off the end round. Since we'll be banking balls into this pocket, then this pocket becomes zero. And these diamonds are 10, 20, 30, and 40. And the diamonds on the opposite rail are named exactly the same. So now we can see that the cue ball is on the 40, 20 path. And when you first try this shot, shoot the cue ball toward 20 and see where it ends up. On my table, it comes up about half a diamond short. Since I know it plays short, I'll just aim slightly to the left of 20 and the cue ball should head toward the pocket. It's always a good idea to quickly check the table before a league or tournament match. Try checking a few paths around the table, like this path here where you're shooting from 40 to 20 and see what adjustments you're going to need to make. Now when I bank balls toward the corner, I have a target on the in rail that I can use so I'm no longer guessing. Now the cue ball is on the 2010 path. On most tables, even tables that play short, shooting the cue ball along the natural path should work for pocketing the ball at this angle. So when banking balls first find the natural path the object ball is on. This now gives you a reference point on the rail to use as a target. Now make whatever adjustments you need to make in order to pocket the ball. So in this situation, I'll first find the angle the eight ball is on, which is the 30-15 path. Since the table plays a little short at this angle, instead of aiming toward 15, I'm going to aim the object ball just to the left of 15. In part two, we're going to go through side rail to end rail banks, and I'm also going to show you what adjustments you need to make when the cue ball is inside or outside the natural path.